All right, let's finish this up. All right, so after you acquire an asset, you can <clears throat> have expenditures relating to that asset. Some of those are uh, expensed immediately, and some of those are capitalized and depreciated over the remaining useful life of the asset. <clears throat> and so expenditures that maintain a given level of benefits are simply expensed in the period they're incurred. An example of that would be you have a delivery truck and uh, of course you need to change the oil every so often to make sure that it keeps running and, and that it actually has oil in the engine. So that would be expensed immediately, the, the cost of the oil change. Compare that with a new engine that's going to increase the life as well as the efficiency of the vehicle that would be capitalized and depreciated over its life. So you could have a situation where it's increasing the asset's book value. You could have a situation where something is capitalized, an expense is capitalized because it uh, is considered creating a new asset. And again, expensing immediately just means that it maintains uh, whatever given level of benefits you expected in the first place. So expenditures can increase useful lives by or future benefits by extension of useful life. Um, it can also uh, increase future benefits by uh, in cre creating an operating efficiency of the asset. So improvements to the current state of a piece of equipment, for instance, might cause more products to be produced over time. Also, it could decrease future operating costs. If you make an expenditure that increases the quality of the goods produced by the asset that increases future benefits and must be capitalized as well. And for practical purposes, companies normally have a threshold for capitalization, a dollar threshold. And so even if something improves efficiency, uh, improves output or increases the useful life of an asset if it's a non-material amount, they're going to expense it when incurred anyway. So we, we uh, break or we classify subsequent expenditures as four classes. Repairs and maintenance, we've already kind of looked at. I mean, that's pretty easy. It doesn't extend the life, the efficiency of an asset. You expense it when it's incurred. Uh, for additions, improvements, and rearrangements, different story. Here, here's an example of repair and maintenance cost of an engine tune-up or the repair of an engine part for a delivery truck allows the truck to continue its normal productive activity. 
that the maintenance not performed, the truck will not provide the benefits originally anticipated. And so in that, set, in that sense, future benefits are provided without the, the repair of the trucks no longer operable. Now for additions, such as adding a new major uh, component to an existing asset, you have to capitalize that because future benefits are increased. And so here they have an example of a refrigeration unit being added to this delivery of truck. And of course, of course it increases the capability of the truck because now you can deliver refrigerated goods, not unrefrigerated goods, so it increases the future benefits. And so just like we saw in the initial uh, purchase of assets, the capitalized cost would include all necessary expenditures required to bring the addition to a condition and location for its intended use. Another example would be a, a building addition, building a new addition to a hospital. It would include the cost of tearing down and removing the wall of the existing building as well as the cost of the addition. Now, improvements involves the replacement of a major component of an existing asset. And so, it could be a new component with the same characteristics as the old component, or it could be a new component with enhanced operating capabilities. In either case, the cost of the improvement usually increases future benefit should be capitalized by increasing the value of the related asset and depreciating the useful life of using that new book value over its possibly new estimated useful life. So here we have an example of our refrigeration unit added to a delivery truck. So here it's an existing refrigeration unit, so if we change it up a little bit, that could be replaced with a new but similar unit or with a new and improved refrigeration unit. Either one. So you've got to capitalize and depreciate over the new book value. Now there's a couple of different methods, actually three methods you can use to record the cost of improvements. One's called the substitution method, which I think is the easier method to conceptualize. Uh, capitalization of new cost method or the reduction of accumulation method. So um, I'll show you those. Under the substitution method, you dispose of, dispose of the old unit and you record the new unit or component. Under the capitalization of the new cost method, you're going to Include the cost of the improvement as a debit to the related asset account, the original cost and accumulated depreciation of the original component are not removed. Now, you, this is only acceptable if the book value of the original component has been reduced to an immaterial amount through prior depreciation. And last but not least, the reduction of accumulated depreciation uh, the asset account is left unaltered, but its related accumulation or accumulated depreciation is decreased. So 
book value is the same as in capitalize or the capitalization of cost method, but the cost and the accumulated depreciation amounts both differ under the two methods. So let's go through an example here. Palmer Corporation replaced the air conditioning system of one, its, of one of its office buildings that it leases to tenants. The cost of the old air conditioning system, 200000 is included in the cost of the building. However, the company has separately depreciated the air conditioning system. Depreciation recorded up to the date of replacement is totaled 160000 The old system was removed and a new system installed at a cost of uh, 230000 which was paid in cash. Parts of the old system were sold for $12,000. So under the substitution method, which, uh, again, I think is easier to conceptualize, you're going to dispose of the old component. You recognize the receipt of cash for the old component and the difference is going to be either a loss or a gain. So here we're removing the building by crediting it, we're removing the accumulated depreciation by debiting it, recognizing our cash by debiting it, and the difference between our debits and credits is going to be uh, $28,000. So that's our loss on disposal. And of course, you could always do well, the book value at the time is 40000 and you're only receiving 12, so your loss is going to be 28,000. You could also do it that way. Now you're going to put on the books the new uh, AC unit. So you're going to record as part of buildings 230,000. Of course, your credit's going to be the cash. It's much easier to conceptualize. And here, under the capitalization of new cost method, you're simply going to record the difference between the cost of the uh, new AC system minus any cash received for the old system. So you're going to debit buildings and credit cash to 18. Now here, and I notice the difference in the prior example, you're debiting buildings for 218 and crediting cash. Here, you're debiting accumulated depreciation buildings for 218 and crediting cash. So again, it's going to going to have a different amount in your buildings and uh, accumulated depreciation depending on which method you use. Rearrangements are expenditures to restructure an asset without addition, replacement, or improvement the objective here is to create a new capability for the asset and not necessarily extend its life. And so the, uh, the examples they have here are rearrangement of machinery on the production line to increase operational efficiency or relocation of a, comp a company's operating plant or office building. If the rearrangement expenditures are material, if they increase future benefits, they should be capitalized and then expensed in the future period of benefit. If it's non material or it's uncertain, the future benefits have been increased, you should expense in the period incurred. All 
All right. So that ends our lecture for Chapter 11. I'll put an assignment out there today.